This is actually the Jeet Kune Do, Christianized Jeet Kune Do for Hanukkah. All right, here it goes. Let's read the context. This is talking about the end of the age when the Lord Jesus destroys all his enemies and his last enemy, the enemy is death. He's going to destroy and abolish physical death. <clears throat> There'll be no more death. Then the age to come will be ushered in. That new age where the Lord will transform the heavens and the earth, making them new qualitatively. It's not going to be a new heaven being brought into existence and a new earth being brought into existence. It's this heaven and earth transformed like you are made a new creature, but it's the same you transformed so that in that age, it will be perfect righteousness, perfect peace, <clears throat> perfect bliss, <clears throat> deathlessness, immortality, moral incorruptibility, no more sin, no more Satan, no more scandal. That's the age to come. So notice what Paul says is going to happen when the Lord Jesus brings in that age. Okay, here we go. 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28. <clears throat> and by the way, the entire chapter of 1 Corinthians 15 is about the general resurrection of believers, what to expect, and why you should believe in the resurrection. That's the entire theme. And how Jesus' resurrection is the proof the divine imprimatur, God's nihil obstat, to use Catholic terminology, that there is a resurrection at the end of the age. What's the proof? God raised Jesus physically, bodily, to immortality, where Jesus now experiences human <clears throat> immortality, human deathlessness, because he's still a man with a physical body, made immortal, as a guarantee that we who are in Christ will be raised physically, to be like him, deathless, immortal, morally incorruptible. So Jesus is the first fruits of the batch of the harvest of the redeemed who will be resurrected to possess physical bodies like his, bodies under the control and power and dominion of the spirit. That's why they're spiritual bodies, not under the control, dominion of what Paul calls the suche, your soul, because here Paul uses flesh and blood and soul to mean that evil, sinful tendency and influence. That's the entire theme of 1 Corinthians 15. Okay, here it goes from their Bible. 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28. Okay, next, the end when he ha hands over the kingdom. In fact, let me read 20 to 23 so you can understand what he's talking about. You guys ready? 1 Corinthians 15, 20, 23 in their Bible. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep in death. Now, what does it mean, first fruits? Right? You'd have the first fruits of the spring harvest, right? You know that your field would produce a plentiful crop because around harvest time in the spring, you'd have the first batch of the harvest. And if your first batch was good, then that guaranteed that the rest of the batch, the harvest, would be good and plentiful. So Jesus is the first batch, the first fruits of the harvest of the redeemed will be raised to life. You understand the imagery here? As Holy Spirit guides me to speak without error. So Christ, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep in death, he's been raised. For since death came through a man, Adam, resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. <clears throat> For just as in Adam all are dying, so also in Christ all will be made alive. But each one in his own proper order. Christ the first fruit. So it's saying there is an order. Time. First comes the first fruits. Afterward, the rest of the harvest. And who's the harvest? Afterward, those who belong to the Christ during his presence, his appearance. So do you understand the context? So now... First came the first fruits of the dead, Jesus. Then the rest of the harvest of those who are asleep, they will then awaken and be raised. But when will they be awakened and when will they be raised? Now let's read 24, 28. Next, the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father. So Paul is saying, when the rest of the dead are resurrected, 
and death has been abolished and destroyed, done away with, then Jesus will hand the kingdom to his God and Father. When he has brought to nothing all government and all authority and power. Now, you want you guys want me to go into meat, right? <clears throat> According to the promise of scripture, the time will come, there'll no longer be any competing, opposing governments, agencies, and kingdoms. Because when Jesus comes, he will abolish <clears throat> all other rule, all other government authority and kingdoms and the only kingdom and government and rule will be that of god on earth forever and ever it will be one government one kingdom one dominion one authority on earth the kingdom of god and that kingdom will last forever and will never be replaced so when he comes all these governments and agencies and authorities will be abolished, especially all the governments and authorities who seek to oppose the rule of God, legislate contrarily to the will of God, and legislate sin and abomination to their shame and humiliation in their war against God and his rule. And only God's rule will be implemented fully without hindrance, without opposition, when Christ comes and raises the dead and his rule will remain on earth forever. So far we got it, right? Okay. Because there's a lot of meat to unpack. I can't go through this too fast. <clears throat> so for now, we endure this filthy dog, Biden, this, this demonic tool, spiritual whore, use of the devil, who claims to be a Catholic, him and Nancy Jezebel Pelosi, <clears throat> who are destroying the economy and causing us to suffer <clears throat> and causing the poor to suffer even more. We put up with them for a season because when Christ comes, there'll be no American government, no Russian government, no Saudi Arabian government. It will be God's government on earth. Now watch 25. Now let's read 25. <clears throat> right? 25 for he must rule as king so he rules now notice jesus is ruling as king from heaven so they he though he allows these governments and agencies and kingdoms to rule even in opposition to him he's still sovereign over them supreme over them almighty over them but he's allowing them to continue for a season and for a reason so he must rule as king from god's throne the father's throne until God has put all enemies under his feet. And the last enemy, death, is to be brought to nothing. So the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Now, let's unpack that. You guys want meat, right? You guys want meat? You guys want meat, right? What's the last enemy that will be destroyed? The last enemy is death, right? Now, do you understand the heart of God there? I don't know if you understood it. Let's see if you understood the heart of God. God hates death. Death was not God's will for mankind. Death is an enemy that God hates. But death exists because of Satan and Adam and Eve who disobeyed God and brought death into being. But notice the heart of God. Death is an enemy that he hates and he wants to destroy and will destroy which means that God's desire for mankind wasn't that men would die. That wasn't his will for us. But that's the consequence of our sin. The soul that sins shall die. Ezekiel 18, verse 4 and 20. For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. So you see, do you see the heart of God being reflected and God's perfect word, the Holy Bible, is this Bible not beautiful? Because it reveals to you the heart of your creator. God hates death. Death is his enemy. He did not desire death to exist. He did not want death to enter the world. He did not want his creatures to experience death. But because of rebellion, this is the consequence of death. That's why in Hebrews 2, 14 and 15, we are told 
It is the devil who has authority over death. Why? Because in Hebrews 2, 14 and 15, it was the devil that instigated Adam and Eve to sin, thereby bringing death into the world. So he caused death to enter by tempting Adam and Eve to sin. That's Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Are we getting it? Thanks, Sam, for that amazing teaching. Thank God that death will be no more. For a full video and for the merch store, link is in the description box. As always, Sam's YouTube channel. Go on over there and subscribe to like all his videos. Um, we do have new merch. So go ahead and uh, buy a couple shirts if you want. Um, all proceeds go to Sam's ministry. My name is Jay, and as always, all praise to the one true triune God. Amen.